Good morning, church. The Bible says, One thing have I desired of the Lord, and the one thing I will seek after, that I may dwell in His presence. I hope this morning, the one thing the Bible says is also your one thing. If you got up this morning, the one thing that you desire is getting into the house of God because in the house of God is the presence of the Lord. Amen, amen. I'm excited this morning to worship God. I'm excited this morning to give my praise to the living God. Can we all stand and give our best praise to God this morning? Give it all to Him because He deserves it all. Just put your hand upon your heart. Let's see. Praise the Lord, oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Yes, Lord, we're here just to do that. Praise the of our praise, yeah? Let's sing this song. We give you the highest praise, yeah?
Bless God in the fields of plenty. Bless God in the darkest valley. Every child saw there. I bless your name. Bless God when my hands are empty. Bless God with the praise that comes me. Bless God when my body's watching. Every chance again, I bless your name. Bless God when the weapons fall me. Bless God when the walls are falling. Bless God every chance again, I bless your name. Bless God for you.
there's no veil upon our eyes, Lord, that we can see you clearly, Lord. Because you've given us eyes, the eyes of our hearts, Lord God, to know you, to love you.
This morning, that is our desire, Lord. How you would draw us to you, Lord, and we will run together. Jesus, we love your presence, Lord. We love your presence, Jesus. Church, will you lift your hand and say to Jesus, Lord, I love your presence. We love your presence, Lord. We long for you, Lord. I love your presence, Lord. Just to be with you. This is one thing, Lord, we ask of you. 
and it's going to be the one thing that we're going to run after. Lord, your presence is so important to your church. It's because in, it's in you we live, we move, and we have our being. It's your presence that has transformed our life. It's your presence that has made us feel what we feel today, love and call. In you, Lord God, we have a new identity. In you, Lord, we have a great hope that doesn't disappoint. We love your presence, Lord. We love you, and that's all that we want to tell you this morning, Lord, that we love you. And we want to be drawn to you, Lord, because the more we draw to you, the more you draw to us, and the more you draw to us, we become like you, Lord. You know, the song is saying, till I seek your face, I'm going to draw to you, Lord. I'm going to come to you, Lord. Till I see your face. Can we make this up? Can you hold your neighbor's hand and just say, Lord, this is the purpose. I'm here, Lord. My, my whole focus, my whole life is about worship. I praise Him for who He is, for what He's done. I, I worship Him for who He is. We're worshiping Him this morning for who He is. Would you pray for your neighbor and say, Lord, this is, as we get into this year, Lord God, we're going to desire your presence, Lord. I'm going to desire the house of the Lord. I'm going to desire where God is. That's going to be the place where I will want to be found.
Let's applaud our Lord this morning. He's worthy of all our praise. He's worthy of all our praise. Thank you, Lord. Once again, let's put our hands together and welcome Pastor Shelton as he brings God's word to us. Prepare your hearts. You know, God's going to speak to us this morning. better from here. It's wonderful to be able to gather like this and worship God and just focus on Him. You know, as we were singing, draw us, Lord. And sometimes when we say, draw us into your presence, we know God is everywhere, right? So what does it mean? And it's really our hearts becoming more and more aware of Him our lives getting more focused and connected with Him. That's what really He delights in. And when He becomes central to all that we do, that's when everything falls into place. And that's why the battle in the nation is who will the nations worship? Amen. That's really the battle. And we know that God is not egoistic. He's calling us to worship Him so that He becomes center. And when the world gets to that place, and every knee will bow and every tongue confess, and everything else will be back to its order. And that's what we desire. And so our worship continues as we go out from here. We go out with His presence. And God's calling us in every aspect of life, in every sphere of society, to be this worshiping people. Amen. To arise in His name. To shine. For the light is not coming, but has come. Amen. And the glory has risen. And it's about us getting more and more aware of His presence, of His heart. And that's really what I believe the church is all about. And the church is moving forward, you know. The church is not going into defeat. The conflict is there because the light is shining and darkness does not like it. Amen. So that's one of the words that really gripped my heart in this year from Isaiah chapter 60. And verse 1 and 2 says, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. For behold, darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the people. But the Lord will arise upon you, and His glory will be seen in the midst of darkness. Now when you look at the previous chapter, 
In chapter 59, and you see, the Lord says, my hand is not short, in verse 1. God's hand is not short to reach out into our situation. But he says, but your sin has separated. Your sin has withheld certain things. And in our lives often and in the nations and in our cities and in our churches, God's calling us to arise even in our situation into what He has for us. Amen? His grace is there and that's why Christ came. You see, when you look at 58 and, and, and He's talking about the falsehood and the false fast. And then he goes on to encourage people there with his promises when we draw near to him and when we walk in the covenant that he has made with us. So Isaiah is looking even from before Christ came into the world and he's looking prophetically and he's looking where we are today, where Christ has already come. But he's also looking to the future and the golden age that is going to be unraveled with the kingdom of God coming in all its power and all its glory and Christ reigning and ruling. Amen. So as we often say today, we are in the already what he has done, but we are in the not yet and we are moving. And that's what we see some, sometimes the battle and the dilemma in our own lives. And the aspirations that must grip our hearts so that we say, God, as we sang today, we want more of you, Lord God. Because it's only as the flesh dies, as we pick up the cross and follow him, we are able to see more and more of Jesus being revealed through our lives and in our lives. Amen. So, praise God for the, the manifestation of His presence, of His glory that continues to unveil in the world. And we in the world today are seeing more of people coming to Christ than ever before doesn't seem like it sometimes, but it's true. Amen. So let's stand with that truth. Amen. For his kingdom is advancing. His kingdom will know no end, it says in, the prophet says in Isaiah 9. His kingdom will know no end. It's just going to keep increasing and increasing. So we better get aligned with him. We better say, God, we want this, Lord. We want those areas of our lives to be dealt with, Lord, that holds us back or holds us down as individuals, as families, as a church, as a church in the city and a church in the nation and a church in the world. That word when we talk of arise, it speaks of an intentionality that must come into us. God's given the provision to Christ's death on the cross. He's given provision for us now as we are a new creation. In His grace, He's given us His power. We just don't sing about it. We must move in it. Amen. 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 And enjoy it. And when we feel weak, we can invite Jesus into this brokenness that his light would shine and we would rise up. So that word speaks of standing up. And you're standing up in Christ, you're arising. It means breaking the resistance that holds us back. And sin comes in various forms. Disobedience comes in various forms. Distraction. And things in this world are great that God has created. But we've got to know that even in all the good things and the legitimate things, when Christ is central, everything falls into place. Amen. Amen. Yeah. So it's a call that God's giving to arrive. It's a call that will have a causative effect. That's what the Hebrew word says about this word. 
So no matter what situation, no matter what kind of peer pressure that you may be facing in your workplace or in your family or in the atmosphere sometimes around, it's not to, we must not get pressed down, but we must stand up in Christ. And even in our weakness, when we step out, it become, we begin to know his strength that will rise up in our hearts. I've seen that many times. In times when there's been opposition, there's been resistance, there's been despair. There's been a, a feeling that I'm just not there. But as I choose to obey God in what he has done for me and what is he saying to me, I begin to see the change. And feelings change, but feelings can't lead us. God's word and God's spirit leads us. Jesus must lead us. Our eyes must be on him. That's why it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 17, it says, Now the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. That freedom, no one can take it away from you. No government can take it. No law can take it. Because where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And we with all unveiled faces are looking as in a mirror at the glory of the Lord are being transformed into from glory to glory. And this is from the Lord who is the Spirit. Imagine just looking, just gazing. We were singing about that this morning. Looking at him, seeing him, seeking his face. You see, when we seek him, we find him. And God can be found even as we begin to explore in our workplaces, in our situations, even in our trials, and even in our brokenness, we begin to see in the crying and in the laughter, we begin to see God. That's the beauty of what he's called us to do, the creator, to explore, to seek and to find. And he's calling us as a church and this church too, in these days to arise. So will we arrive? That's the question you need to answer. Will we look at the glory? It's not just in a... In, in a Sunday morning. But it's in hardcore work when you're there. God wants you to know He's there. God wants you to explore and see the unveiling of His creative, innovative ways that can come forth in the most ordinary situations of life. But we must respond and be transformed. From glory to glory. I've seen my own life and, you know, as we walk these years, and I'm sure in your lives too, as you walk, as you look to the Lord, you see more and more things falling away of the flesh, of carnality, and you'll begin to see more and more of the freedom of Christ in you, even in your personalities. Many people knew me as an introvert. I don't know how they'd label me today probably. But, but there was an, a kind of a sense of just being to myself. And as Christ came in and as I began to walk in God, my wife comments this all the time. She says, you couldn't get a word from him, but now he speaks too much. <laughs> and I say, well, you pray. When God gives, he gives in abundance. <laughs> You ask for it. And that's true. And she just say, I used to imagine I'll sit with my husband and talk, but he talks so much. And now she says he talks too much. Praise God. But really, that's, that's what God did. And God can do that in every one of our lives. No matter, don't get dabbed by, you know, your personality or what people have branded you to be. Let's look at Jesus and go into his and grow into his completeness. He's our image. He is the God of glory. He's the one we're looking at. And that's what transforms us. 
So you see him in the word. You see him in worship. You see him as you acknowledge him through the day. You see him in every kind of situation. He has got eyes. Let him see. So the shining of the light. We often talk of God is light and God is light. God is a consuming fire, but God is light. God is love. And the light of his presence wants to permeate every area of our lives. So not only does he call us to shine, but he calls us as we shine to see that shining within us first. Now, it doesn't mean you get perfect, but it means that as you walk with God and you allow Him to work inside of you, as you walk in the light, simultaneously you begin to see God working in you and God working through you. There was a doctrine at some time years ago, you know, you can't just go and share because you're not ready. Yet. You're not perfect. That's from the pit of hell. Because God calls you from day one to be a light. God calls from day one to take that step and take some others in that one step you've taken. God calls you to share your life and share your love and share what Jesus has done. We'll never be ready. We're always getting better. Amen. There's always more to grow in. There's always more to move in. There's more depth to, to explore in God. But he calls us, even in the place we are, and that's why we talk about John 12, 46 says, I have come as a light to the world so that everyone who believes in me would not remain in darkness. Through our belief, we, begun, we begin to come out of darkness immediately. But it says the grace of God and salvation works in us in this new creation that we are. And we put on intentionally. You always have the choice. Every day you have the choice. Every day you have the choice. Every moment you have the choice. To follow him or to follow your own desires. And when we blow it, praise God, we have the choice to come back and say, forgive me, Lord. Amen. We have the choice to repent and to turn around. So speaking the gospel to ourselves, the whole chapter of Isaiah 60 is full of life. And when you keep reading that chapter when you go home, because you see there's so much of what God is saying that he's done, he's doing, and he's going to do. You see the gospel in one sense being unveiled over there. And the power of the gospel. So when we talk about being inward focused, are we open to speak the gospel to ourselves in a most candid way? To say, Shelton, this is the gospel to me today. Christ died for me. Yes, but what about this area of my life? What about this area where I missed it? So to allow that light to be like a searchlight over my mind, over my thoughts, over my heart. It's for every one of us. So that that freedom will not await us, but be a part of us at all times. So don't be condemned, but allow God to bring that conviction that he wants to bring through you. And that inward focus is not to be an introvert. But that inward focus is not to be self-centered, but it's allowing the gospel to flow into my heart and to shine into my life inwardly so that I may get more free for that light to shine outwardly. We become outward focused as we allow the light to shine and to lead us in our world, in our home, in the church, in your locality, citywide, worldwide. 
This is this gospel of love. This is the gospel of Christ's redemption that brings goodness, change, newness, and impact. It's the greatest news that we could ever know and we could ever speak about. And even when we are down, we can tell him, Lord, here I am again. But come, Lord, invite Jesus in. Allow the renewal of the Holy Spirit. And that renewal in the gospel, when we talk of the five-chapter gospel, we talk of the creation, the purpose that God has for us. We talk about the fall and we talk about the fallenness that's still there. That we contend with. But we also talk about the redemption where God came to redeem us, to buy us back. But he came to redeem all things, the Bible says in Colossians 1.20. So everything you do in your work can be meaningful as you go with the gospel. And you see that these values, these things, maybe in a song, maybe in a lyric, maybe somewhere floating around to an unbeliever, but there are certain things and certain values that you see are able to be redeemed. Because it's actually God. And I like what, and I often quote this in our transformation network in Mumbai, transformation. Abraham Kuyper, who's a pastor who became the prime minister of Holland, and who said there is not one inch of ground on this earth where Jesus does not say, it is mine. It is all his. So in your workplace, you are called to redeem. You are called in your work too. God's interested in what you're doing. Because even in that, in your studies, in your focus, in your family, the light will shine. And God's interested. So this is the gospel. And the directive is to share as we talk of light. To share his love, to find out, Lord, what can I be, where can I be used today to touch one person, Lord? Even when you come on Sundays, who do I meet, Lord? Maybe your word can touch somebody. Your shake, your handshake, your love, your prayer. It's not just coming to receive, but it's coming to give. And even as you go out from here, the shopkeeper you meet, the person on the street you meet, the person in your area, reach out in friendship. Let them see something different. Let them see that light shining. Hey, this guy seems very different from someone else. What about the sweeper who knocks at your door or the postman? And where you can look for opportunities. I remember one young man coming to my door trying to sell me a newspaper. Now, my father worked for Times of India. I was a diehard Times of India. I remember this guy coming and, and talking to me about buying the Hindustan Times. And he seemed a young Tamil background, but he was speaking English quite well. And you could tell that he had a zeal to sell that paper. So anyway, sir, can you give me 10 minutes? He said, I said, sure. But one condition that you give me 10 minutes. So he said, okay. So he came in and he started sharing about the Hindustan Times. By the way, I, I, I switched to it later. <laughs> so he got me. And then... And I saw innocence in this guy. And I started asking him, and he told me the hardship he was going through in his family in this room in the Ravi. And uh, he just started opening out. So I said, now my 10 minutes. And I started sharing about the light and what Jesus can do in our heart. But he asked me, he said, can you pray? Because he was in a Catholic school or something. So. And bless me. So I blessed him. And he came back. And he kept coming back. And finally, he finished his... What did he do? He did his... Uh, not chartered accountancy. Cost accountancy. And he finished his master's in cost accountancy. 
And God used us in some way to encourage him. Today he's a believer in Christ. Amen. And what about churches? But the point is, now that may happen, may not, but still, we have a mandate. The other day I was in America and one of the house groups, they were telling me about, they had this salesman coming to the door. And you don't see salesmen coming to the door in America too often. And she said, I was so tired. I said, nothing doing. We don't need any books. And he turned his back, a young man, and she felt convicted. And they were about to have their dinner. He said, hey, just call him back. I said, would you like to have dinner with us? And the whole scenario changed. And he felt the love of Jesus. And now he's in dialogue with them. Amen. Now God may work in different, different ways. That's why in Matthew 5, 16, it says, In the same way, let your light shine before men, so that men may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. That men may see. They're not going to come here and, 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 and worship with you to see Jesus. But they're going to see through you. They're going to, they, they could come later. But initially, they are going to see through your works. And I've seen even in, when I've blown it in my building or something, if I've got upset with somebody, I, I think some years ago something happened. And I went to this person and I said, hey, I'm sorry, forgive me. I shouldn't have been like that. This is who I really am. And even that weakness starts to become God's brightness. Because he shines. So don't be afraid to, to be who you are, to humble yourself, be contrite so that God's light can come within us, within this community. But don't stay here. We want to see a city transformed. We want to see churches being united in this city. We want to see the city for the glory of God. We want to see this nation. There's a lot of promises about India. But more than that, I believe India will be a platform for the glory of God, as we keep saying, to the nations of the earth. So the light is so important, and the light of convic conviction, the light of confession. 1 John 1, 7 says, If we walk in the light, as He Himself is in the light, we have fellowship. We talk about fellowship with one another. This fellowship is, is not just coming together and praising God. Yes, it's so important to worship together and praise. But worship and praise, I said, must be a part of our whole being, even as we go out from here. But it's also about a community where you learn to relate. He was talking about the small group Salvin was just sharing. Find community where we can relate. The other day we were in the faith and work stream and uh, Alvin was there and we were talking about business and entrepreneurship in the city and getting people in every church to understand that their work is important. Their business is important, not just so that they can bring in money and tithes, but because God's there and God has ordained that they are there and they become the light of God. But as you walk in the light, you have fellowship. You have koinonia. Amen. If you don't walk in light, darkness comes very easily. And community has a way of walking, working in a cyclic way. In one sense, you walk in the light, you have fellowship. And as you have fellowship, you walk in the light. Because it helps you. Many times I've been down and, uh, and a friend has come along or a call has come along to help me to get up. That's what fellowship's all about. Amen. It's not to condemn us. But even it's to correct us if we need to be corrected. But it's also to encourage us and to bring healing to our lives. So don't just look for that love and say, hey, I don't see love in the church. I remember when I was pastoring one of our churches, someone came to me. I don't see love in the church. 
I said, you're not seeing it. Maybe you're the one to bring it. <laughs> Come on, let's start with you. <laughs> Amen. Rick Warren said this. He said, what you see as a need may become your call. So what's the need in this church? Come on. That could be your call. Amen. So that's what the light does. It may show you the need, not so that you can point and say, hey, those guys, you're a part. Say, we guys. God, what can I do to contribute here? What can I do to help you? How can I pray, Lord God? So we have fellowship and the blood of Jesus cleanses us. I love this word. Because it says when we walk in the light, we have fellowship. And because we are walking in light, you start opening yourself up. You confess your sins. You are open to conviction and conversion. Reconversion, renewal, that's what I mean. You're open to that God working so that God works in those areas of your life. And it brings freedom. The blood cleanses. When there's darkness, the blood can't cleanse. That's why God says, confess your sin one to another. If you need to confess to one another, you need to confess. If there are areas of darkness in our lives, you need to find somebody to say, hey, I'm struggling here. I need to get out of this. No matter how grievous the sin, we need help. If we say we have no sin, we are deceiving ourselves. Hello. And the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, He's faithful and righteous to forgive us of all our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I need to confess the most to my wife. So, because I just may say something, you know, without even realizing it. Because we take each other for granted. And, and praise God, God's setting me free more and more. And if I don't confess, she makes sure I confess. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. So let us draw near. That's what Hebrews 10, 20 to 23 says when we talk about this light. Draw near with a true and a heart, a true heart, sorry, in full assurance of our faith. A heart sprinkled clean from an evil conscience. And our bodies washed in pure water. That's what the word is like water. The water of the word. The spirit is like water. It cleanses. It cleanses our conscience. From evil. And let us hold to the confession of our hope. Without wavering. For he who is promised you. Is faithful. He is faithful. No matter how imperfect we are, He is faithful. No matter who's let you down, He is faithful. And if we are unfaithful, He still is faithful. What a blessed assurance. What the rock of all ages is a rock. Rock of ages cleft for me. Let me hide myself from this. What a beautiful hymn. Amen. Because He is the rock. He is the rock of our salvation. And when we walk in the light, conviction and confession brings freedom. The cleansing of the blood, as I said, enables us to fellowship with one another. And our pathways shine like the dawn. That's what Proverbs chapter 4 and 18 to 19 says. You know, the, you know it talks about, let me just read that. It says, the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn, shining bright and brighter until the midday. Amen. May we shine brighter and brighter. May it not go dimmer and dimmer. And when you see somebody going dim, you need to pray. You need to help that person. You need to come alongside. That's why we are kept in a body. That's why we are in a community. That's why we are here to not just enjoy the atmosphere, but arising to do something about the atmosphere. 
and to help with the atmospheres of life in one another's life and in life itself. The privilege of being recipient. You see, beloved, we are recipients of the glory. It says the glory has risen upon who? Thee, you. King James says thee. The glory is risen. The glory is not just goosebumps. Oh, I felt it, brother. You, you may feel it. That's good. Hallelujah. Feel it. Amen. But sometimes when you don't feel, he's still there. The glory. Sometimes when you're down or you feel I'm broken, the glory shines even more sometimes because you're allowing it to shine. Because you're humbling yourself. The glory shines. The glory rises. The glory is God himself. <clears throat> it's his presence. But it's the concentrated or it's the essence of who God is. That's the glory. The glory is revealed in his love. And Moses said, show me your glory. Of course, God hid him there. But mercy and love was that glory. The glory speaks of more. It speaks of His power. It speaks of all that God is. And if that intensifies without the blood, we'll be dead. Really, we'll be dead. You can't stand. I can't stand. That's why Christ had to come and die for us. Because when Adam sinned, he was cast out of the garden. And a flaming sword kept moving there with the angel. Because sin can have no place in God. And that's why there's a constant walking with God in the newness of life, in the blood of Jesus. It's a continual flow. We are a new creation redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. The battle will continue all your life. That's good news. Amen. But the battle is between light and darkness. But the victory, as we always say, has been won by Christ. And it's like we're going through a shadow. But it's God who fights for us. And we must learn that art in the battle. This rising up is in the grace of God. This arising is by His strength. We take the step, but he lifts us up. I always talk about the persecution times when, uh, you know, I used to be very afraid of persecution. I don't know about you. But I used to be afraid as a young believer when I came, what if I get beaten, man? What's going to happen? Or this happens, what's going to happen? Oh, I don't want that. Lord, just keep me. I don't know how I'll react. But I tell you when that started to happen, and I've, I've faced that a number of times, I've sensed the glory as I've never said. I've known the tangible presence. And many of you may have, I don't know, but some of you. And once when another thing happened to me and I said, Lord, how did this happen? Because someone threw a slipper at me. And I moved, and it kissed me. I said, I was a cricketer. I had pretty good reflexes. But it kissed me. And when it kissed me, of course, I took some authority in Jesus' name and rebuked something. But for four days, three days, I was walking as if there was no gravity. And I'm telling Melissa, I don't understand this. I'm in a phenomenal place. The glory is around me. And I went back to the Bible and 1 Peter 4, I think it's 12 to 14, it says, when you are persecuted for righteousness sake, rejoice for the spirit of glory rests upon you. Now these things are not just words, they are meant to be experiences. Amen. So in the battle, let there be reflection. Let there be repentance. Let the enemy not get a foothold. In Ephesians it says, do not give the devil a foothold. You give him a foothold, 
he'll make your life a stronghold. So the moment the foot comes in, repent of it. Get out of it. Amen. Get prayer if needed. That there's no stronghold. Nip it in the bud. And help one another to nip it in the bud. Let there be accountability in the battle. Let there be humility, accountability. Where you say, hey, you can ask me stuff about my life. Find somebody you can talk to and say, hey, talk to me. You can ask me. How's your marriage? If you're married here. Yeah. How's your struggle? And if there's deep struggle, we need to find somebody we can be accountable to. People are getting in pawn these days and all sorts of things. And, and we need to be accountable if that's gripping your mind and gripping your heart. And so when you press the button, you say, hey, I press the button today. I'm sorry. Help me. And I know small communities that are doing that in churches and helping one another to get out of it. Because that's like an addiction that will grip you and destroy you and try to destroy you. But in this battle, there's security in Jesus. While aligning with the Spirit and the Word, enabling us to be equipped, enabling us. There's security in God. My God, I thank Him. Last few days, I've been just, my wife's not here and I'm alone. I'm not alone, alone. Jesus is here and with me. Amen. And I've been just doing some stuff. And I've been just enjoying the security of God. Like a flower, like a blanket around. So, beloved, we are in that time. Amen. The battle is real, but the victory is ours. Whatsoever is born of God is victorious. And this is the victory that conquers the world, overcomes the world, even our faith. Right? So God's glory will continue to shine. Unity is such an important part of this. You know, we are living in times of unprecedented uncertainties. Things are going to change fast. With AI coming in, it's just going to escalate. And it's not a bad thing. Not everything's bad. But even good things, when it begins to change, it brings a lot of insecurity. And then we, if we are not secure in God, uncertainty seems to loom over our lives. In the financial area, in, in job areas, in all these things will shake. But God calls us, therefore, to gather together, to be united in Christ. And that unity comes as we walk in the light, as we are willing to walk, as we are willing to fellowship. Jesus prayed that prayer, and that's why even as a church, we are praying for the transformation network. We are praying that churches, more and more individuals in churches, as we join together, we begin to see God's work in every sphere of society. There are so many journalists. We, we are praying for journalists to come around. We still haven't gone into that area. But business guys, artists, praise the Lord. Let's go for it. For in this glorious restoration, that's where our hope lies, beloved. As you live, look at Isaiah 60 and you look at the whole chapter, it talks about no need for the light because that glory is coming, but the kingdom's coming. Revelation chapter 21 22 talks about when Christ himself shall return. And we are going towards that. <clears throat> we live in the already. We live in the salvation given to us. We live in the light. But we are seeing the not yet being unveiled. It's wonderful as we start moving. We start finding. We start seeing the unveiling of what God has said here in his word. And let's look for the next 10 years, 15 years, if the Lord tarries, outlast us, outlast many of us here so that the next generation and the Z generation can rise up in these days. We are praying for that to happen. So as we look at this, we see the promises of God's abundant mercy. God has said kings will come, princes will come, 
Isaiah prophesied that years ago, and it's happened in nations, and it's happening. Leader, the tyrants also coming to Christ in different kinds of situations. Multitudes coming to the Lord in Iran. Multitudes even in parts of our nation, we believe. So let's rise up and not be afraid. Amen. Let's stand for a moment. But let's, as we move forward, ask God, Lord, what is that which you're speaking to us? What is that you've given to us as a church that we are going to hold on to and move forward? What is that in my own life that I want to see the next steps, Lord? What is the goals that you have put down in your work in other areas? As we look forward, beloved, but let's heed the warnings, let's heed the cautions of self-exaltation, greed, deceit, empire building, but instead move joyfully and confidently in the fear of God, building His kingdom. As we acknowledge His light and strength in our weakness, let's realize that all we have is His, and He is the source of all things. Let's just say all things. Jesus, you're my source. God, you are my source. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You know, when I said stand up, you stood up, right? Praise God for that. But you made an intentional action. And there's got to be intentionality in your steps, in the word, in your commitment. There's intentionality. There's intentionality when you go to catch a plane or a flight or a train. You don't go on time, you miss it. There's intentionality. There's intentionality when you eat your food. Unless you can't, then someone feeds you. So beloved, let's arrive into all that God has for us. We are living in an exciting time that God wants to open heaven, open doors that you've never seen. And we'll only see it if we are willing to step out Maybe as someone said, when you've done what you've never done before, when you do what you've never done before, you'll see what you've never seen before. Are you willing? Are you willing? Are you willing? It may be a small step, but are you willing? If you're willing, let's just lift up our hands. I'm willing. I want God. I want to say, Lord, I'm just willing, Lord, in whatever you place me, Lord, wherever you place me. Thank you, Father, for Every heart here, every person here, thank you for the church, thank you for the Hindi churches that were late here. We say, Lord, let us be willing. And we are willing. So help us now with the next steps in our home, in our family, in our individual lives, in our workplace. Oh, Lord, that we would step out, Lord God. In Jesus' name, you can put your hand down, but I'm praying right now. And saying in Jesus' name, every kind of thing that holds anyone back here, every chain would be cut off, would be broken. And I pray in Jesus' name that you would be free to move into the next step. That you would be free to enjoy God and to allow Him to deal with your life. Father, I pray that they would allow you, that we would all allow you in every nook and corner of our minds, our hearts. We would allow you to have access, oh Father, in these days. Oh, mighty God, come, Lord God. We say, let your spirit, Lord God, free, Lord, just free us, Lord. Free each person, every man, woman, every child, Lord God. Free us, Lord God. Let that stamp of freedom that we arise and shine in the light in spite of darkness. Thank you for the victory that we are going to see. Thank you. Let's just thank him. Thank him for his light. Be blessed. Know your love today. Know your call today. Just know the Spirit reaches out to you today. Reaches out to you today. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name.